In this lesson, we introduce and understand the goodness of fit measures for a regression model, namely the R square and the adjusted R square. These values are produced as part of the regression output. We get to understand what these values are and how are they to be interpreted in evaluating the fit of your regression model to the data. Continuing with the regression model we estimated in the last lesson, let us now interpret the R square measure produced in the output. The measure is produced in the output as shown and is a goodness of fit measure. That is, it tells us how well does the regression model fit our data. Let us first understand how this measure is constructed and then we will interpret it. The aim of regression model is to explain as much as possible the variation in the y variable using the set of x variables. A measure of the overall variation in the y variable is something called the total sum of squares, which is produced in the regression output as shown. The aim is to explain as much as possible of this variation using our regression model. Part of this variation gets explained by our regression model. That part is known as the explain or regression sum of squares. The remaining part goes unexplained and is known as the unexplained or the residual sum of squares. So, total sum of squares is equal to regression sum of squares plus residual sum of squares. A good fitting regression model will have a larger proportion of total sum of squares that is explained by the model as compared to a poor fitting model. This notion is used to calculate R square, which is calculated as regression sum of squares divided by total sum of squares. In our example, the R square rounded to 4 decimal places is equal to 0 0.4745. This is interpreted as implying that our regression model can explain about 47.45 percent variation in the y variable, which is house prices. The remaining variation goes unexplained. A few more points about R square. The R square value is always between 0 and 1. Value closer to 1 implies a good fitting model, while value closer to 0 implies a poor fitting model. Unfortunately, there is no one value above which you can claim that the model is good fitting and below which you can say that the model is poor fitting. The value of R square that we get 0 0.4745 is not that high and the fit of the model to data may not be that good. I would generally consider higher values to be good R square values. A common misconception though is that a low R square model is of no use. That clearly is not correct. A low R square means that perhaps you are missing some important right hand side explanatory variables in your model and that predictions using the model may not be that accurate. However, in defense of a low R square model, remember that Though the model may not be able to predict very well, however, there still is value to the model in the sense that it tells you the relationship between price and number of rooms, between price and annual income, between price and tax rate and so on. It may not predict very well, perhaps because you are missing some important x variables. However, the model does tell you the relationship between the existing set of x variables and the y variable. If your focus in using the regression model is to make predictions, then clearly you should be worried about low R squares. However, if your focus is more on understanding relationships between your x variables and the y variable, then you may not be that concerned about low R squares. Another statistic produced in the regression output below the R square is something called the adjusted R square. Let us understand what this measure is. Regression is a process where mere addition of additional x variables will increase your R square irrespective of whether the additional variables make sense or not. The R square may not increase by a whole lot, but it will never go down on addition of variables. Let us see this in Excel where we will add some 
random numbers as additional x variables and see what happens to the r square. This is the home prices data that we worked on and this is the regression output that we estimated from this data. Our r square that was estimated was 0 0.47446. So now what we'll do is we'll insert additional x variables and then see how does the r square change. However, the additional x variables that we'll introduce will simply be a random string of numbers which do not commonsensically make sense to be included in the regression model. However, the regression process is such that the r square would always tend to increase and that's what we'll demonstrate here. So let's introduce two columns here. We'll introduce two sets of new additional variables. Let's call the first additional variable as random one and the second variable as random two. So for random one, what we'll do is I'll use the Excel function rand between so this function was used in course one of this specialization we had introduced this function there so this generates an integer valued random number between two numbers so i'll give one and 29 i could have given any numbers here i'm simply generating a string of random numbers between 1 and 29 enter and I copy and paste it all the way down. So I've generated a whole string of random numbers between 1 and 29. And this I'll use as an additional x variable. Again, this does not commonsensically make sense that this is likely to influence price. Nevertheless, we'll include it in the regression and see what happens. Similarly, I'll generate one additional x variable, random 2. And this I'll use the function rand open and close parenthesis. So this function, once again, we had introduced in course one of the specialization, this generates a random number between zero and one. I copy and paste it all the way down and I get a string of random numbers. So notice that whenever you do any calculation in your spreadsheet, the entire set of random numbers are recalculated. That's why you're seeing these numbers changing as we do any calculation, but that's okay because they are at the end random numbers. So let's run a regression, including these two additional variables. Go to data, data analysis, regression, do an okay. My Y variable is the house price. I select including the label because my I've checked my labels box. I select the entire column, my y variable, my x variables now are rooms, the annual income, the tax rate, percentage commercial, and the two additional variables that I've created in my data. I select all these variables. I'll put the regression output beneath my earlier output and do an OK. So notice the R square for my new regression is 0 0.4774, which is greater than my earlier R square. So once again, the emphasis that whenever you add variables, whether the variables commonsensically make sense or not, the regression procedure is such that mere addition of variables, R square would never go down. It may go up by a small amount. Nevertheless, it will always go up. So to partially correct for this kind of phenomena, the adjusted R square adjusts the R square for the number of X variables in the model. The adjusted R square increases only if the additional X variable improves the model more than would be expected by chance. It decreases when the additional x variable improves the model by less than expected by chance. In our regression output, 
with the two additional random variables note that the r square increased however the adjusted r square decreased in the two regressions that we conducted we saw that the r square values did increase when we added two additional variables when we generated two strings of random numbers and added to the regression the r square values did increase however notice what happens to the adjusted r square the adjusted r square values actually go down on addition of the two additional variables from 0.4497 it goes down to 0.4396 so remember the adjusted r square measure adjusts the r square by the number of x variables used in the regression model and adjusted r square would go up only if the additional x variables contribute more to the model than what would be expected by mere chance if that does not happen then the adjusted r square actually would go down with the addition of additional variables and that is what is happening in our case that the additional two variables do not contribute to the model more than what would be expected by mere chance which of these two r square should you use i would be inclined to use the adjusted r square as it is more closer in spirit to the fit of the model to data